What's going on everybody? It's your boy Say CJ here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Before you do anything, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to stay in the loop for all the new videos that are going to come. So, today I'm going to carry on on the theme of issues in, the, in our culture, testimonies and also call, a call to words I believe God has given me for this generation. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another opportunity to use this platform for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for the words you're going to speak into my mouth as you use me for a vessel for your glory. I pray, Lord, Father God, that as I speak, Lord, your words will go before me. I pray, Lord, you will be, Father God, um, flowing through my mouthpiece. I will be a mouthpiece for your glory. Father God, let uh, Christians be edified, touched, challenged, stirred, and let non-believers encounter you. In Jesus name amen so I felt like a God gave me a word to this generation of radical obedience uh, and we always hear about it you know the Bible says you cannot be hot uh, or you cannot be in the middle you have to be hot or cold you cannot be lukewarm but I kind of want to take it from another stance where it's that this isn't really saying okay you know I'll be hot or cold it's really just saying be hot because radical obedience to Christ when you live radically obedient to Christ you will truly fulfill your purpose as a Christian I think when you're not a Christian being radical for Christ probably won't resonate but I just pray that when you encounter Christ through this video today non-believer or person that doesn't really you don't really know about Christ my brother or my sister uh, auntie or uncle whoever you may be that i pray that you will encounter christ in a radical way so that you when you get saved when you accept him it's not in a religious way but in a radical way where you encounter the person of jesus christ and for my believers for my christian brothers and sisters that will be seeing this the reason why this is just a call to radical obedience rather than a, oh, you can't, you have to be either one or the other. I don't want to give it a choice thing. I want it to be choose radical obedience. Choose to serve God with all your heart and soul and mind. And what I mean by this is choose to give him everything. Uh, this is another call in itself. And this is a call of picking up your cross, denying yourself and following Christ with your everything. Putting everything aside to follow him wholeheartedly. Because we can be saved. And we can know God, but we don't give him everything. We don't serve him with everything. We don't say, God, here's my life and everything. And I believe that in this just generation, what I believe God is calling this generation to do is really love God with every fibre of their being. And I mean this in a literal sense, not in a metaphorical sense. I mean, literally, God, give God everything, your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, your desires, everything lay it before God and say God here is my whole body as a living sacrifice I give it to you and why I believe this is such an important statement for this generation is because we're living in the last days and as Jesus comes closer and closer and closer and closer before he comes or oh, we are oh, closer to his arrival we need to be radical now we need to live for Christ with all of our hearts now we need to be sharing the gospel wherever we can go we need to be living as Christ has called us to live now because we have a purpose and a destiny as children of God on this earth to be the salt of the earth and to make a difference and to touch lives with the truth that we have. This truth that burns inside of our chest needs to be shared with the whole world. Um, I've been seeing, you know, what with Kanye's radical conversion, the impact it's making and it's given a way for other Christians to say, okay, if this guy... Kanye West can be superly radical about his faith in mainstream platforms, in secular domains, around people that are not in support of his faith. And us Christians, we have no excuse to not be radical about Christ. That this man is potentially a new believer. And praise God, God has done a work in his life. But if this man can be a vocal, then so can we. And I believe that Kanye is setting an example and leading his arm to our generation to be vocal. 
we're not called just to be people that just attend church faithfully but we don't say we don't bring in or impact in our lives you can go to church every sunday and not actually be serving christ with your whole life it's a monday to saturday through faith you can be praying every day but you're not really encountering christ you can read the bible but not be walking in god's will for your life it's about radically serving him and saying god i lay down my life to do your will in my life and to be a disciple and to follow you and when i did when i did that in my life that's when i saw god open doors for me it's when i saw god open doors in uh, for what I believe is my music ministry. So when I saw God opening avenues and how he could use me as a young man for his glory and he was able to touch me and he was able to bless me and he was able to do great things, sorry. He was able to really take me, take my life and use it for something beyond myself. And what I just want to really encourage everybody is radical obedience. And that might be putting down things that are lesser, putting down things that are not beneficial. Since everything is, is permissible, but not everything is, is beneficial in the Bible. It might mean putting down certain music that doesn't draw you to his throne. It might be putting down certain films that don't draw you to his throne. It might be putting down certain relationships that don't pull you to his throne. The Bible says it clearly, and I thought this is really what God wanted me to say was, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, anyone that chooses to be friends with the world becomes an enemy of God. If you, you know, loyalty to Christ requires complete abandonment of the worldly things. So many people live for Christ, but they're still, still clinging on to worldly things, still in love with worldly things, still a part of worldly culture. But Christ calls us to leave that, be set apart. Bible when when uh, being a saint because the Bible says when you when you repent you go from being a sinner to a saint. That's why I am Saint CJ because I'm a sinner saved by grace, which makes me now a saint, a child of God. Saints, we're all called to be saints. We are the saints of God. That means we are His holy people, His set apart, His holy chosen people, His priesthood. We are we are not like the world, so we need to stop trying to be like the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. And I believe that so many Christians, we're, we're, we're in the world and we're of the world. The same people that profess Christ are the same people that will be at the party vibes into the same music as those sinner, as, this, as, as, as the secular man. But why is that? Why are we still enjoying and, and being pulled into the same fruits of people that don't serve the God that we serve? Indulging in the same activities laughing at the same jokes, uh, pursuing the same things. We have Christians that pursue money more than God like men in the world do. But what does the Bible say? It says, do not be worried and concerned about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. This is things that Gentiles worry about. But this is what we do. We spend our time thinking about restaurants, expensive places and getting expensive clothes rather than investing our money into the kingdom business, into kingdom things. So I just pray... For those that are believers, that this will make inspire you and stir you to radical obedience. And Christ is calling this generation to radical obedience. He's calling me to radical obedience. Will you lay it all down for him? Will you lay it all down for Jesus? Will you lay it all down for the King of Kings when he laid down his whole life for you? I think, why should we be so radically obedient to Christ? Because he was so radically sacrificial to us. There was a post that I want to share. Um, that I saw today that really hit me and made me re really uh, what spurred me to make this video right now. This is what the post says. Really, really touched me deeply and I really want to share it. Each nail was six to eight inches long. The nails were driven into his wrists. There's a tendon in the wrist that extends to the shoulder. The Roman guards knew that when the nails were being hammered into Jesus' wrists, that his tendons would, would tear and break. 
forcing Jesus to use his back muscles to support himself so he could not breathe, or so he could breathe, sorry. Both of his feet were nailed together. Thus we was forced thus he was forced to support himself on the single nail that impaled his feet to the cross. Jesus could not support himself with his legs because of the pain, so he's forced to alternate between arching his back then using his legs just to continue to breathe. Imagine the struggle, the pain, the suffering, the courage. Jesus endured this reality for over three hours. Yes, over three hours. Can you imagine this kind of suffering? A few minutes before he died, Jesus stopped bleeding. He was simply pouring out water from his wounds. That's just an extract, a small part of what Jesus done for us. When he placed that those nails in his wrists, nails in his feet, which led him to literally suffer for three hours, just from that, just from the cross, not let alone the whipping on his back, the nail, the, the crown of thorns in his head, the humiliation of being stripped naked in front of everybody, beaten, spat on, slapped, and then not even thinking about the emotional, abandoned by your friends, abandoned by your family, abandoned by those that love you, told you're nothing, told you're ridiculous, cussed, mocked he took all that radical sacrifice so we may know him so how can we not radically serve him how can we not give him our lives how can we not give his, him our lives as a living sacrifice and love him with it all and say god yeah know what jesus here is me i'm so grateful i'm so thankful i'll give it all for you maybe be a generation that will say i'll give it all for jesus and when he, we do that we're going to see God move miraculously in this generation. We're going to see God do powerful things. We're going to see God save and deliver and restore lives. If we just be willing to take it, give it all, be radical, put away worldly things, put away things that don't matter, put away earthly things. Jesus is calling out and he's saying, live for me with all your heart, soul and mind. And I'll give you all the desires of your heart if you seek me first. This generation will seek him first. Seek him more than we seek Instagram. Seek him more than we seek uh, the things of this world, relationships. We're going to see a mighty move of God. Amen. So be encouraged. If you ever want to reach out to me about how you live radically for Christ, step by step, or how to get more on fire for your faith, please hit me up on Instagram at saintcj underscore. S-A-I-N-T C-J underscore Let's keep the conversation in the comment section If you know any advice to help new believers Or people that may be watching this That want to get more serious and radical for Christ And also make sure to share this With people that need it For those that don't know we've, For those that don't know um, Christ For those that don't know you Lord um, I say this prayer uh, Heavenly Father I pray for those that don't know you, that they will encounter you radically, even through this short YouTube video. May they know you, may they trust you, and may they live for you, Lord Jesus, today. If they don't know you, may they say this prayer, Lord, forgive me for the things I've done. Enter into my heart and save me and use me today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, please hit me up. I'd love to support you in your journey as you serve Christ. And I also, for those that are already serving Christ, let me also support you how to grow your relationship too. God bless you. And for those of you that wonder what this top says, it says, wake, pray, grind, repeat. So hey, let that be an encouragement as well <laughs> to you in whatever your endeavours may be. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.